Hello again, everyone. I was <laughs> having a play this morning and I suddenly thought maybe I should be filming this because um, I was doing the tissue paper with 3D embossing folders yesterday and as a sort of tail end piece, I mentioned that you could use paper napkins, paper serviettes instead of tissue paper if you didn't have any tissue paper at all. So I showed this this napkin and so I I just ripped a piece off and to rip it off I just simply I'll show you what I did with a drop of water just went along like this. I don't know what's underneath it if it's gonna damage anything. Go down like that and then you simply just pull it apart and it and it rips where the water is. So that's kind of that's kind of what I did. But then I, you know, got rid of all the other bits. And then I suddenly thought to myself, looks a little bit boring just like that, really. So I, I then grabbed a drawer of stamps and, and these are Unity stamps, I think. And there's some Kaiselcraft, is it? Katzelcraft, not Kaiselcraft, Katzelcraft stamps. And I just stamped it a, a few bits and pieces with first fine Claire. And then I went on carrying on thinking to myself, what shall I do? And I thought, well, I wonder what would happen if I tried to put it onto black. I don't know whether this slap it on matte medium would just simply make this napkin translucent or whether it would hang on to the white. I don't know if it it could or it couldn't, you just don't know. But there's one way to find out, isn't there? So I thought I'd have a try. Um, I've got a, this is a five by seven card panel. Um, it, it might just about fit on, mightn't it? So I presumably could cut a card panel from this, but I don't propose to do a panel first and then put it onto it. I'll, I'll, I'll do it on, on the, the main card first and then cut my panel where I think the image will be in the best position. So I do go on, don't I? Anyway, I have, I've also got a, an embossing folder, which I don't believe I've ever used before. It's of clocks. I think it may be, is it an alternate? No, they, they put their name on, don't they? I think, no, alternate print on it. Not sure what make this one is. I'll try and find out. Anyway, what I thought I would do first of all is try the slap it on, see what happens, emboss it with this and then I thought maybe I could highlight the embossing with a bit of gilding wax. Who knows? Let me just see. Let's, let's just see. I'm going to try doing both sides of this. The, very, the tissue paper one I made myself yesterday, I decided I didn't need to, to um, add medium to both sides, just the top, because it's so thin, it made it really difficult to handle. See if I can get just a little of this out. Oh, come on. There we go. I don't know if that's going to be enough, but I'd rather have two much than too little. Right, let's get some on my brush. I don't think I don't think I have got enough actually. Let me, we'll see. Let me put some more out. No, I haven't got enough. It's kind of soaking it in. Let's put some more down. Oh dear. Yesterday I had too much from the outset. Right, let's have a see. looks white at the moment, but, but it's on a white surface, so you don't know what's going to happen. Oh, there's another layer coming off there. That's interesting. Have I got two plies here, not one? I may have. I don't know. I'm going to just try it as it is anyway. There we go. Right. Let us do the top of this. Someone mentioned to me yesterday that, that that looks like it's a different layer, you see. But it doesn't matter, it's all to the good. Little bit of variety. 
that's a load of good. Now, don't know what's going to happen to this. So I'm just going to put some more medium over the rest of the, the front and then I'll dry it. And when I've dried it, we'll come back and play a bit more. But first of all, I'm just going to cover the rest of the front that I think I may be using with the medium. Oh, what I was starting to say, somebody said they thought, because they saw this kind of thing, I think, that I'd ch chosen the wrong ink to stamp with. But on the finished card, as on here, you can see when I've gone over it with the medium, it hasn't run at all. So I think I chose the right ink in the Versifying Claire. OK, I'm going to leave that to dry and I'll be back. Well, my panel is dry and it still looks rather white, doesn't it? So I think that was kind of all right. So I'm going to cut out a complete panel, the same size as the one I showed you to start with, as, as the white one. And we'll kind of see what happens when I emboss this one. It's a lot of fun, I must confess. This is all, all started from a dear lady in... Uh, Nova Scotia, who sent me some Tim Holtz tissue, uh, collaged kind of tissue paper. I think I may need to tape this down just a tad. Let me just, it's a bit bent. Um, obviously, it's pulled the card, but I think once it's cut and embossed and goodness knows what, it should be probably okay. All right, let's put a bit on there. And put a bit on the bottom as well. Put it down here. Okay, put my plate on top and through we will go. Someone else was asking actually what my um, die cutting machine is here. Sometimes it comes into to show, but my desk is so, so small that uh, people can't see, but I will just show you what it is. It is a Platinum 6, and that hasn't cut terribly well. It's, this is another point for um, um, short. If you, put your, if you put your die in absolutely parallel to the rollers, it's got like a great hump to go over and it doesn't necessarily cut terribly well. If I'd gone back the other way, it might have done better. But what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to finish this cut on my trimmer. So we put it through, line it up with the edge and just check it. Okay. Right. So there is my pan. It's actually quite thick card. Now that's going to be a bit short to go in there, isn't it? I really fancied these clocks. Um, what do we do about that? Uh, <laughs> what I could do, this is just thinking off the top of my head, I could <sighs> intend to have um, a bar across for some reason somewhere and I could I could um, emboss so far one way to a point and stop come back turn this round some of the I don't know if the clocks have got all the are they all the right way up no they're all kind of at funny angle so I don't think it matters to I'm going to try it I, I just I don't know how whether this is going to work but I was not thinking about the other alternative is to just cut off the top and the bottom of this and have a, sh a smaller one. Oh dear, what should I do? I'm going to I'm going to use a smaller frame. That's that's too big. It's 
still. And it's just, what does that look like on there? It's not too bad. Uh, I could go down one size, maybe. Let me have a look. These are press cut nesting dies. Where's the rectangles? Here they are. They go down one size. That's one size smaller. Does that fit into there? That should fit into there. What does that look like on there? It's pretty much the whole of the... Um, <laughs> what to do? That looks like it's straight down the middle then, and I don't know if I care for that. I think I'll do it on one side like that. Oh, these people who change their minds, I don't know. Let's just pop these out of the way. Put little hangers on the wall at uh, Dale in New York State made for me on his 3D printer. So let me just cut this out again. I should be able to put this one on one, on one side. I'll just show you what I'm doing. Slightly on one side, like this. If you can put your dies in slightly at an angle, rather than being absolutely parallel to the rollers, it's like going up a ramp. It goes up slowly rather than having to go up a step. So let me just take this down again. They talk about going off on the fly. It's a bit, let's just see. That there. Bearing in mind, this is really, really thick card. It's a probably 300 GSM, I would think. It's quite a heavy one. Right, let's cut this. There we go. Now that will fit in my embossing folder. Talk about it. Oh dear. I'll put that away. Right. Now to emboss it into here. I don't think it matters where it goes really. Okay. I don't know what this I don't know what this um sandwich is for this. Let's just Let's just try with my regular embossing plate and see what, see what happens. Oh, that's too much. Let's take this platform out. Try again. That doesn't feel like quite enough. So I will put in a shin if I can find it. Should be here somewhere. Got a me metal shin. Oh, can't see it. Let's use this in use this instead. Right, let's try again. That's better. So you don't always need the singing and dancing things, do you really? This is just one of my bits of stuff I bought to take photographs against that I laminated to make it into a, like a palette thing. So there we go. Okay, let's have a look at this. Well, that's quite nice on there. And we can't see it very well, which is why I propose to use a bit of this gilding wax. I just love it. And I've got my one of my little eyeshadow applicators. Let's just see how we get on with this.
I think that might be enough, actually. Don't want to go too mad with the stuff. Um, The other thing I thought might look rather nice would be a few little stars, a little few, a few little gold stars around the place. So I'll put those on next. Here I've got two, I liked it so much I bought it twice. Um, these are memory box little stars. I bought them when they were on sale, I think. And all I do, put a bit of double-sided tape on the back of some gold card, run it through the die cutting machine and then you have a load of little stars just ready to pop onto the project. So you can just put these kind of anywhere and they're different sizes. I don't know if this is just a couple sizes or three, I don't know, but you can just kind of pop them around as a little cascade. They often either stay in the die like this or in the paper like that so you can just take off what you want. So, have some more of the smaller ones. It's very shiny. a few more. Let's take the ones out of here. If they're on here it's easy to do. You just push off the backing like that, pick it up and pop it on. Push off the backing, pick it up and pop it on. Make a bit more down here I think. Uh, these are larger ones aren't they? Have some of the small ones. It's making me go funny. <laughs> it's so shiny in this light. Goodness me. I did actually just colour in the corner one as well with some of the gilding wax. Now, I think just to, all it needs is, is a bit of a sentiment, probably. Here's my card base. Here's my panel. Does it need a gold? Matt, maybe. Let's just have a look, see what it kind of looks like. Yes, I think maybe it does. So I could cut a gold mat for it and probably a die cut gold sentiment. Do I want to put anything else on there anymore? sort of collagey things. I'll have a little think, but I just thought it would be interesting to show you the experiment of trying to use this tissue paper business on black card or a darker coloured card. The tissue paper, in this case the napkin, where the real tissue paper would show, it might just become part of the of the background, mightn't it? Okay, so another one to try. I hope you've had fun. Do subscribe. Do give a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching.